A few years ago, I embarked on a new chapter in my life. I got divorced after a long marriage and I started over. I enlisted in the Army, the Army of Online Dating. <laughs> a friend told me when I joined this Army that men are here to entertain you. She learned this from 10 years of online dating before she met the one. So I adopted her mantra, men are here to entertain me. If I'm not being entertained, it's time to move on. I did hope to meet the one, but the chances of that guy just showing up in my life were slim, so off I went into the interwebs of online dating. I realized there was no end to who I could meet online, but the question was, who am I? My profile was clear. Single female, sunny, funny, sassy, optimistic. I love live music, theater. I like beaches, being near the water. I like sunsets and fireplaces and wine. Yeah, that's 99% of any online dating profile. <laughs> the best part of online dating is all the excitement leading up to the date. You've emailed, you've texted, you've talked on the phone, and all the test rockets have gone up well, and the day you meet this potential person is so full of promise. So I met a guy named Tony, and Tony had said on the phone that fitness was a big deal to him. And so at the first date, after the pleasantries were exchanged, Tony said, so I'm very active, as in hiking, biking, swimming, gym workouts every day. How many miles a day do you hike or bike? <laughs> and I said, hmm, well, let's see, uh, I don't know, like maybe 4,000 steps? How much is that? <laughs> he took out a pad of paper and started to take notes. <laughs> and then he said, and are you a runner? And I said, well, it sounds like your fitness plan, you're really serious about this. I do run, but actually only when I'm being chased. <laughs> the interrogation, or should I say the date, ended not too long after that. And I knew inside this was not my guy, and I was not being entertained. So then I met Bill. Our emails were great, and it sounded like he was an interesting guy, so we agreed to meet up in a restaurant for dinner. And he was cute and funny, there was a little spark, and you know, we were eating our meal and sharing our war stories. And then Bill said, so this has been fun, but now I need to step out. And inside I thought, this was going well. So I said, really, you have to step out? He said, yes, I had surgery a couple of weeks ago, and I have to go out to the car now and empty my bile duct drain. <laughs> I'd like you to come out and keep me company. It only takes an hour, including flushing the tube. I looked at him in horror and I said, um, no, I am gonna pass on that. And inside I thought, hell no. And who asks someone you've just met to witness a medical procedure? This really turned me off and it was not entertaining. So I moved on. Then I met Steve. Steve was a retired Smithsonian scientist. Um, he had lost weight with gastric bypass and made lots of changes in his life after divorce. Um, his email was charming. The phone call to set the date was energetic and flirty. And he sounded really interested in my life. And he seemed like he might be that funny, nerdy, smart kind of guy that I like. I was excited. Maybe he's the one. So we met at a restaurant and we greeted each other and he said, I can't believe I'm finally meeting you. And I said, likewise, we're really doing this. So we sat and we ordered appetizers and we talked about our passions, mine in weaving, his in rock collecting. And then we talked about our kids and our work over our salads. And then we ordered our entrees. Now, I was wondering about all this food, because if you know anything about gastric bypass, let's just say there's a smaller place for all the food to go. So anyway, our entrees arrived, and we began to talk, and, and Steve said, tell me about your favorite vacation destination. 
And before I could answer, he got this panicked look on his face. You know that experience where your stomach is telling your bowels that you have to go? It was that look. And he said, excuse me, I'll be right back. And I said, sure. He rushed off to the bathroom. Kind of embarrassing, right? I mean, we've all been there. So about 10 minutes passed, and he returned to the table. And he said, a little embarrassed, sorry. Now, where were we? And I said, I think we were talking about vacations. And he said, yes, we were. And then suddenly, he got a bigger panicked look on his face. You know the experience where your bowels are now screaming to your rectum that you have to go again? And now, he had that look on his face. And as he bolted off to the bathroom, he was running and he did that thing where you put your hand behind your butt as you run, like it's somehow gonna hold back what's about to pour out of you. Yes, it was that look. And he was gone for 20 minutes. I, I just finished my meal. You know, he came back to the table and he knew there was no recovering this state. And the chemistry that had been there had faded like a mirage. The bathroom breaks had kind of disrupted and the moment had passed. He had blown it literally. <laughs> but it was disturbingly entertaining. <laughs> Online dating is like cigarettes. It's supposed to look cool, it's addictive like gambling, but ultimately it disappoints. It's not as fun as they make it look like on TV. And people are just not honest. It's so scripted and at any rate, I do hope to someday meet the one, maybe I already have, Stay tuned, operators are standing by. <laughs> but online dating has been really good to me for stories, and if I do it again, it will be just for the stories, because you just can't make this shit up. 